XC, trail. XC, trail. Ah, oh, it's just so flipping tough to choose. So which one is right for you? With the lines between genres blurring ever further, then I feel that's no truer than between these two types of bike, XC and Trail, both great capable types of bike nowadays that you can really rip around on. But which one is actually best for you? Well, there's only one way to find out, a good old fashioned razzing around the woods, a proper thorough experiment if you like. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the bikes. In the trail corner then, weighing in at approximately 13 kilograms is this, my Orbea Occam, a 140, 150mm travel bike built to smash trails. This thing is an absolute shredder. A 36 up front, nice and sturdy. We've got a lot of aluminum parts, aluminum wheels, cranks, things like that. Nice and strong, so they can really take a pound in. But it is still a carbon frame at heart. And as you'll notice, a coil spring just showing that this trail bike is designed to get nice and rowdy. On top of that, we've got four pop brakes, a dropper seat post, of course, and some big old clipless platform style pedals. Larger, chunkier, thicker casing tires and a wide range cassette prove that the trail bike is designed to shred on up the hill and really rip it back down. But what about my cross country bike? In the XC corner is this then, the Canyon Lux Trail of mine coming in at a very swelled 11.2 kilograms. It's an absolute modern day race beast. Built to be lightweight and fast on the trail, carbon frame of course, air shock on the back and at the front. Still 110, 120 mil travel. Uh, a fairly slack head angle for an XC bike as well, but look, carbon wheels, carbon cranks, carbon bars, tiny skinny pedals. We've got a bigger chain ring up front on this than the trail bike and a real wide range cassette out back, just proving that it is built for speed. Once you get up there, it is gonna be hauling. And also, I can lock out the suspension with the click of a remote on this one as well. There they are then, two fully tricked out, very up-to-date bikes from two very different genres, supposedly. So, how do they fare out on the trail? Well, there's only one way to find out. Like I said, normally I do some kind of test sprinting up fire roads and timing descents, but we kind of always know how that's gonna fare with an XC bike being faster up a fire road and the trail bike obviously being a good capable descender. So I think we need to dial this up a notch. We need to find really hard climbs and really hard descents. So we're here at Bentonville's zone four of the Oz Trails network. And supposedly the climb up here is horrendous. So I think we hop on a bike, we see how we go and then let's compare and contrast. First up then the cross country bike on the climb. The born climber, the dedicated climber, some might say, how's it gonna handle it though when it gets super technical like it is, especially with all these varying different terrains with the type of tires I've got on here. Well, let's kick things off. So here we go, first attempt. <sighs> Zone one, denial. I'm stick my seat up. Maybe we'll put that back down, okay. It's not too narrow luckily, but here is where it already gets a bit steeper. Chunky rocks, oh, a bit of wheel spin. Okay, oh, and we wave, we wheel spin. All right, XC efficiency, engage. And then on the gas. Can't beat the XC bike on this, he's just smooth climbs. Absolute rocket ship around the corner. Just accelerate. Easy peasy. <sighs> so near the top of this section of the climb, and we're done. Crazy feature, look at this. Okay, home stretch. Woo-wee! Turn of the trail bike then. And with the bigger tires and slightly softer pressures I run on this, hopefully, well hopefully I'm gonna get a little bit further, but the lightweight zippiness of that cross country bike is tricky. Here we go then, let's drop in. I'm gonna stand up. I'm not gonna bother putting a seat up on this one. There we go. All right. 
smoothly across the shore. Okay, tyres are hooking up. Uh, this is where it started to go a bit wrong. Oh. Yes, look, no wheel spin on the gravel this time. Tight through the trees. There is a slight difference in the weight, obviously, and it is noticeable, especially on these punchier bits. Ooh, for the bobbin as well. Oh, here we go, a bit more tech as that. Ooh, nice. Oh, off camber. Yes. Good job I got similar gear. The tyres have made a huge difference. I think that could be a factor here. We're nearly there. Final section of climb over this crazy north shore. Look. Neck and neck. Oh. Blur my neck. Okay, that is both bikes done on the climb. You're probably gagging to know how each one got on because that was pretty tech. I think you'll agree. You're going to have to wait because we need to head over to the downhill. Sheesh, finally at the hub. Look at that. For the downhill track that I'm going to use then, I've chosen the Schoolhouse of Rock, a mixture of rocks, loose terrain, jumps, drops, and tight turns to push both of these bikes to the very limit. Let's see how the XE bike goes. Okay, XC bike, downhill track. Big sign for a drop. Bit sketchier. Oh, here we go. Oh, first test. The lesser travel, making itself known already. Oh, and this really loose surface is a bit sketchy. On these, uh, obviously, slightly harder compound, slightly skinnier tyres. Oh. Really rocky along here. It's having to slow up a little bit. Good fun. So the XD bike is lively, that's for sure. But do you want a lively ride or do you want to survive the ride? That is the question. I like to do both. And we're back on. This track's awesome. This is crap. Loving that. Oh, big rock garden. Definitely got to back it off the touch here. So then, like modern day XC bikes are rad, they can handle it. You just can't push them as hard, you'll do some damage. And I think that is where the big difference lies. Wowza, okay, bit of a puncture in, uh, in that run. Okay, we have annoyingly just got a puncture riding down us. So that goes to show just how hard we are pushing it. I do actually run a slightly firmer pressures in my XC bike. This bike's probably got about two to three PSI more pressure in it than the trail bike. But obviously the tires are slightly thinner, more lightweight um, makeup to them, the sidewalls and things like that to keep the weight down. These are actually the down country tires, but you know, when you smash it down through rock gardens, these things happen, don't they? But the XC was wild down there. I can't wait to see, oh, just how the trail bike gets on. The trail bike. The tires, bigger air volume, much more grip, and the longer travel, I mean, it's self expansion isn't it? the longer travel just eating up the lumps and the bumps as you'd expect it would. So it's just, it's essentially confidence inspiring. Just there in those turns. Straight into them. You can hammer through these dips and not worry about it. Woo. 
Oh. Wow, that was wild. Let's head back, get a bit fueled, and go over the results. So that is the riding all done and dusted. Then I finally finished and ended for the day. And you might be wondering why there is a single bike here. No, it doesn't signify that there was a clear winner. However, there were some distinct positives and negatives between the two types of bike, which we're gonna delve into now. Firstly then, let's distinguish that these are very different bikes. Yes, you can change about the parts to make one seem much more like the other and vice versa. So for example, my cross country bike, I could put some tougher wheels on it, some big chunky tires, maybe a slightly bigger fork on the front, bigger pedals, things like that. But then you are actually taking it away from the from the purpose it's designed for essentially. Likewise, if I was to put an air shock and maybe a Fox 34 and some carbon wheels on my trail bike, then when I take it on real tough trails, it's probably not gonna be capable enough and break more often than not. So you're really starting to blur the lines, like I said at the beginning of the video, which we don't really want to do because it's not a fair comparison then. So the pros and cons of each end, because there were, and don't forget, we were riding some pretty chunky uphill and downhill trails today. So there were some definite moments that each bike would have been put well and truly through its paces. The XC bike on the climb, well, you could see, all right, sometimes traction was a bit compromised because you're running a slightly narrower, lower profile tire. So on the loose gravelly stuff, grip was, oh, and we were. Ah! Overall though, I do think the XC bike was the better climber of the two. Although there was more traction, more grip, and a solid planted feel uh, with the trail bike here, the problem was that actually maneuvering it and hopping it about, so when it got a bit trialsy almost and you had to zip around and move it about, the added suspension made it bob and bounce. Uh, whereas the lightweight flickability of the, the full sus XC bike, well, I think it certainly came into its own, especially when it did get a little bit steeper, like climbing up some of that steep little bit of North Shore towards the end, the weight, uh, you were just able to spin up there and no problem at all. Having said that though, going down on the cross country bike was a lively ride, don't get me wrong. It kind of brought a smile to my face because you're pushing those boundaries of what the tire and what the bike can do. So you just have to remember that this bike isn't a downhill bike, it's not gonna smash trails as well as a trail bike or even an enduro bike. You gotta bear in mind and just remember what it's designed for. The trail bike then, well, where do I begin? On the climbs, it was solid. It was a great dependable climber. The big ratio cassette, the geometry, the bike actually did climb no problem at all. And the chunkier tires with more grip on certainly were a lot better when it got looser. When it was solid ground, the North Shore, the rocks it's the, itself, well then I do think the XC bike was better. However, this thing came into its own completely on the way back down. The extra grip, the solid feel of the fork, no flex or anything like that. And the more travel in the front and the rear just really felt planted and it didn't feel like it was gonna wash out from underneath me all the time. The reason why this is the only bike here, well, if I had to choose between the two and only have one bike to rule them all, I probably would go for this one. The XC bike is amazing. And for an XC race, I'm always gonna choose it. That lightweight efficiency, the riding position, and the geometry is always gonna be king. But when it comes to big days on the bikes with a massive variety of trails, well then I think you need something that can do a massive variety of riding. So the trail bike for me probably comes out just on top. But anyway, that's enough from me then. So let me know in the comments down below, are you an XC bike kind of guy or are you a trail bike kind of girl? Which one are you picking if you had to out of the pair of them? I'm always interested here. So yeah, drop us a comment below. But for me, for now, I'm out of it. Do you know what though, as a little bonus, if you wanna see myself and the rest of the GMBN crew at a big old bike festival, held in Salbach this year. The Global Bike Festival is on in June. The link for tickets is in the description down below. Come on out, join us, bikes, beers, and a whole lot of fun. But for me, for now, I'll see you later.